<laughs> Hi, um, my name is Laura Lee. I'm with Seeking Being, and I'm here today um, with my friend Robin, who is actually my yoga instructor. Uh, I visit with Robin almost three times a week, and I just love my yoga practice and get so much joy from that. And Robin agreed to let me interview her about the eight limbs of yoga. And um, we're both a little bit nervous, but I think it'll be OK. And we'll come out with something where people will learn a little bit more about yoga. So I want to welcome Robin and uh, ask her, how how did you get involved in yoga? Well, uh, let's see. In 1999, I saw a flyer that the city rec, Hollister City Rec, was offering a yoga class, and I just moved relatively close, and so I started going and fell in love with it. It was the first exercise program that I had gone to that I walked out feeling comfortable and confident, <laughs> not sore and miserable, and so I just kind of fell in love with it, and I would do any it was not that much yoga back then, and so anywhere my instructor went, uh, Alita Felice, I I would follow her around town. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually the YMCA opened, and they offered a yoga class, and they had an instructor coming in, and I went there for about a year, and the the YMCA came to me one day and said because I never missed a class you know it was a priority <laughs> and uh, they asked me if I would teach and I was like flabbergasted I'm like I'm not a teacher and I don't I mean I just love it that's all I know <laughs> and so um I said I can't stand up in front of these students where I've been a student and now say I'm your instructor and they said well if we send you to training would you be interested in teaching the class? Because the instructor came over from uh, Santa Cruz and she didn't want to do it anymore. So <laughs> at first I was like, oh no, that's scary. <laughs> but then it was like, my husband convinced me that, you know, this is an opportunity that's being placed in your lap. You'd be crazy not to do it. And so I took the certification and the YMCA paid for it because I would never have sought it out. I would never have put the money up. I would have just continued to be a student and been perfectly happy with that. <laughs> so um, I started teaching for them. And until I until I fell and broke my back, I probably would still be with them. But after I got better and my back repaired, they were uh, hesitant about giving me my time slot back and so I moved on <laughs> and started my classes that I have now. That's in a nutshell how I ended up being a yoga instructor. <laughs> <laughs> un 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 uh, unprepared I guess <laughs> but it's worked out. I feel the love of the people that come because um, I guess because I asked them to have it be their responsibility for how they feel and what they do, not my responsibility for what they feel and how they do. <laughs> so. Yes. So it's worked out. I get that from participating in your in your classes. I, yes. uh, I have committed myself to my own practice. It's my practice. That's that right. Help me facilitate and um, and I get a lot out of it. I really do. So I, I, I try to say I make suggestions and you do what feels right for you because <laughs> I, I sometimes don't know even what my own self is feeling. How can I possibly know what's right for another person? <laughs> yes. That's kind of what Seeking Being is all about. It's about providing all different sorts of information and modalities because it, one thing does not fit all people, right? right. You kind of pick and choose and there's a memory, a, a menu in, in a way of what I'm trying to create is a menu of options for people to try different things. And if it works, 
go with it. And if it doesn't, kick it to the curb and try something else, right? That's right. That's There's, exactly right. But you should at least sample. Yes. <laughs> you don't know, <laughs> don't know if it'll work to sample. And sometimes okay. you need to sample for a little more than one visit, right? Right. One to yoga. 30 days of yoga, if it's not your thing, you'll know, right? Right. If you visceral reaction, negative reaction. <laughs> <laughs> if you're dreading it, why are you showing up? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. I know in, in our yoga practice, we practice two of the, or three, probably three of the eight limbs. Um, can you give us a little bit more idea of of how how much more there is to yoga than what we traditionally see in Western yoga classes? Well, there are the eight limbs, and the the first two, the yamas and the nayamas, are um, <clears throat> ethical living. Is the yamas? Um, it's an how you treat the outer world. How, um, a moral compass kind of thinking, you know, what's what's uh, restraints we should place on ourselves because if the mind wants more, always. <laughs> we always want more. So it's the, the yamas are about those restraints and the outer world and the nayamas are um, positive duties and observances and the inner world. So the, in the in the yamas, we have nonviolence, which I always teach mention in class because I don't want anyone to hurt themselves. It's really important to me that no one leaves class with an injury because, and I've been in classes where people have decided my body should be in a certain position and my body doesn't want to go there. And so I've had, you know, sensations that weren't comfortable for days because someone tried to fix me. <laughs> so that nonviolence is really important to me. Um, and then there's the truth, you know, we should all have a truth, whatever that truth is. Like I said earlier, it seems to be a wide range these days of what's, <laughs> what's real. But then there's non-stealing and, you know, that's the outer world we don't take from others, but we also don't take from ourselves. Um, you know, we don't want to rob ourselves of, of something that might help us, might feel good, might, might work for us. Then we have indulgences, you know, we all know what those are, right? <laughs> too much chocolate one night or <laughs> too much, too long of a walk. <laughs> Because it was beautiful and then there's, you know, three days of sore muscles, whatever it is, you know, there's those indulgences. And then there's the um, positiveness, being non-greedy, non-hoarding, not taking more than you need. Those are the yamas. Those are the outer world. And then the nayamas, the inner world, are the uh, <clears throat> observations and, you know, positive duties meaning cleanliness, you know, if you're, you don't want to pick up germs, right? In this times <laughs> of viruses, we all want to keep our hands clean and, you know, watch what we touch. And, but, you know, it's even to your feet. And when you come to practice, you know, are your feet clean? There's just overall, did you change your sheets on your bed lately? I mean, there's so many things that you could tie into this whole cleanliness for our own inner world how our body is affected mm -hmm. and we have contentment you know contentment where that's a challenge for a lot of us to be to find a place where at least for a little bit we are content because the mind and the ego they want more again <laughs> always looking for you know oh that was good let's have more and then uh self-discipline not not doing more than what's right as soon as your head says you know that i've had enough your body says i've had enough then you need to have the discipline to say you know hey i might not have finished this project but i need to walk away from it for a little bit you know those those are all valuable 
uh, inner world studies, then we have the um, connection with the divine. You know, that's totally inward, right? How we connect with the divine, this uh, study of self. So those are the Nayamas, the, the first two of the eight limbs of yoga. Nice. Should I keep going? <laughs> I, I mean, that. So, not a surrender. Then the asanas. What are the asanas? The asanas are poses. Where you place your body, how you've placed your body. The asanas. They are our postures, our poses. How we stand is one of the more challenging ones. And we stand all the time. But do we stand slouching or... Do we have that awareness of being lifted and that pressure against gravity? Those are those are what most people think of yoga. I mean, that's, you know, pretzel. Oh, I can't put my body in a pretzel. Well, we don't really need to be a pretzel. <laughs> we need to be OK with where we're going. Right. And, and then there's the pranayamas, the breath. I focus a lot on the breath. I think the breath is really important. Um, you know, studies show that by the time you're five and enter school, kids' breaths get short. Where when we were young and babies, we all deep breathe. We were deep breathers, but uh, we just close ourselves off and shallow out that breath. And so, you know, we're not getting the oxygen that we need and our it becomes our natural pattern. So it's really important to find um, a comfortable full breath in our practice of yoga. And then uh, the next one is the pratyahara in withdrawal from our senses. You know, that's why I, I often close the eyes. You're gonna feel your internal being much easier with your eyes closed because the eye, the, Eyes are windows to distraction, <laughs> you know. You start comparing, you know, oh, look what that person's doing. You know, look how deep in the fold they are, how straight they're, whatever it is, you know. We compare, we can't help it. Part of our, uh, the way we keep ourselves safe, you know, is knowing what's around us. But when, we, when we're safe on our mat, we should be able to comfortably close our eyes and, and really feel our body and our breath. And, so, and then there's the Dharyanas, which is our concentration, that constantly returning to our breath, that focus of breathing and, and turning inward and noticing whatever, you know, aches and pains or where we want to stretch or um, how the body's feeling, um, that ability to concentrate. And then the dhyamas, the meditation. I highly suggest that think of your uh, practice, even a moving practice is a, is a meditation if you quiet your mind and are at least aware when your thoughts come in and how they distract us away from the body and away from the breath. And then we go back to, yes, let's return to that breathing and get into that meditative state where our body can heal is where where we heal so like sleep and meditation is what heals our body not running and going and doing constantly it's finding that peace within so that the body can because the body's powerful it can i mean i'm a perfect example of what uh how a practice can can heal the body simply with that my bo broken back, you know? I mean, I really never thought I'd be able to come back to yoga and the, here I am back pretty much full bore, just simply by allowing my body the time to heal. And then the last of the eight limbs of yoga is, the <laughs> samadhi, <laughs> samadhi, a freedom from illusions. You know, our mind builds all this stuff up in our head. It isn't really truth anymore. It's, you know, what we imagine, those illusions. So when we cr make that connection, that freedom from that illusion, um, there's a sense of peace that moves in and 
that higher being comes out. So yes, those eight limbs of yoga, really powerful. I should talk about them more in class and take them individually, but you know, we only have an hour and people don't wanna just, they wanna breathe and move <laughs> or be. <laughs> But I'm seeing how, like, all of the prior seven limbs mm -hmm. to that eighth limb of samadhi, right? Right. Those things feed and support one another. The more you practice each of them, the more they connect with one another and the more ability you have to stay present in the moment, calm, peaceful, joyful, like knowing you're here. Right. Yeah. Yes, they do. They do build on each other. It's kind of interesting that, uh, you know, how the poses, the asanas are, are, are often the main focus, but they can lead you to all of these, this awareness of how we can heal within. Yes. I, I agree. I've had that experience myself. Uh -huh. Things moving, emotions moving right. out, out of my system and, and uh, being able to be more truthful with who I am. Right. right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're, none of us are perfect, but we're all individuals, right? You know, we all have our, our thing. It's interesting with emotions because when I was doing laughter yoga, um, and I mostly started it to bring people to the park, you know, because I'm passionate about parks. And uh, so I started this laughter yoga, I went, was trained and, and the instructor there, he, he was uh, telling us how emotions, even just the simple spelling is E for energy and motion. And our emotions are moving all the time. They never stick, you know? We can go from one emotion to the next in a split second, or we can take our time and shift out of those emotions. But they're always, it's so such a powerful thing to know that your emotions will change if you just give them the time to change and process, you know, what, you know, they're not all bad. Even those ones that don't feel good, they still have a, a healing to them. Mm -hmm. They transform into That's something. Right. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes. Cool. So we had a funny thing happen in yoga class yesterday. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yes, yes. So um, Laura picked a new spot in the room. She'd been picking the same spot pretty consistently if it was available. And she came in and told me she was picking a brand new spot because she'd read all of this uh, benefits for reprogramming our head by moving to a different spot. And so I kind of sat with it for the day. And when I walked into class, I went to a totally different spot. And the Oh, my regulars were all, wait, what are you doing? You're changing. And I'm like, no, no, this will be good for us. Change is good. And and uh, so they're like, well, why are you doing this? You know what? And I said, well, Laura said something about, you know, it would be helpful. And, and so I didn't really mean to throw you under the bus. And, <laughs> But you explained it very well, and I want to thank you for that because I didn't really, you know, get all the scientific behind science behind it. But I knew that change is good, you know, and it's uncomfortable to uh, have change, and we resist change, and so it's it's a powerful thing to just have the teacher be in a different spot in the room, and everybody went. Ah! <laughs> So I hope you didn't have any backlash. I didn't. I was um I was, <laughs> I was surprised. Um, you know, pleasantly surprised. And um, you know, most of the people, you know, once they understood, they they saw the value in it. And and the value is like 
human beings we we love we love to get in the groove and feel like we are always going to stay in the groove but when we purposely push ourselves out of the groove we actually increase our ability to pay attention to what's going on right. and so just simply the simple act of choosing a different spot in the room takes us out of the groove and causes us to be more present yeah. pay attention because it's different and and i you know i i was surprised <laughs> wasn't surprised and it was and i um you know someone came up with the word um neuroplasticity uh -huh. but it helps to promote neuroplasticity and as an aging person you know with a mother with dementia right i'm i'm constantly thinking to myself i got to keep my brain young i have to make it work so that you know I, I third generation you know my mother's third generation with dementia where does that leave me right yeah, scared word <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh shit right should i be <laughs> doctor to get some sort of medication which is not my thing and and i totally support anybody taking medication if that's if that works for them and they feel good about it but i try not to right i try to find natural ways knowing that our bodies are incredibly wise and have an incredible you spoke about your back being broken right our bodies have the ability to heal if given the right conditions and so part of my yoga practice is my brain practice right, right? So I'm, I'm trying to make it work my brain at the same time as my breath and at the same time as my senses i close my eyes and i didn't even know i've been closing my eyes for years in yoga and i didn't even know it was one of the things <laughs> of yoga to close your eyes and pay it close down the senses and be present right so I was surprised when i started to research for doing this interview i was like i'm already doing this one <laughs> yes yes unless you're balancing i mean that's a master's practice to close your eyes and in, in a standing balance that takes a lot of inner strength just core strength alone but just an awareness of where your body is in space alone with your eyes closed. So, you know, I generally cue, you know, find a drishti, a gaze so that it supports your balance. Yes. But yes. still, still, we want to resist our eyes wandering around, you know, looking at because that will throw our balance off as well. So, yes. <laughs> balance is a tightrope you know you drift to one side and then the other and then you come back to center for a moment or a breath or two and then you wobble out of it but it's yeah all, it's all that's why it's a practice we're never going to reach the end we just keep practicing some days are better than others yes i love when you point out it's so easy for the inner critic to get running on the whole balance and you know you got to have it perfect and still and right my my sense of trying to be perfect will easily take over and and you're like yeah you're gonna wobble and you fall out and just kind of you generally just come back in and, and do it and try it again and i'm like yeah that's i have to go with that because i, uh, I will fall out <laughs> and that goes back to the yamas the stealing you know you're you're stealing yourself when you when you let that inner critic rob you of that time to be okay with that wobbliness or that collapse out of a pose or whatever it is you know it's it is it is what it is let it be right <laughs> so that's a that's a perfect example where you may not necessarily be talking specifically about one of the limbs or the principles right mm -hmm. but the the way you facilitate you're bringing them all into the room anyway they're all there <laughs> well that's nice to hear you're not you're not like telling people this is why you're just making the space for them to have their experience and 
in my mind, that makes a great yoga coach, a great yoga facilitator, whatever, however you want to call yourself, right? That's right. I'm hesitant to call myself a teacher. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> I just like, well, let's put this out there. And if you enjoy it, great. And if not, you know, there's lots of other instructors that will tell you exactly what to do. <laughs> right. I think you, uh, you attract participants who are in alignment with how you teach. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's obvious and it's growing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. One of these days we'll be in the big room, huh? <laughs> no, I'm I teasing. <laughs> I see that as um, a really good thing for our community. If we had to move to the big room, that's <laughs> an amazing thing for our community because that means more and more people are are practicing right. in a way that is healthy for themselves and for everyone else. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I know. I'm nervous. Yes. It does. It would make me nervous. <laughs> if it happens, be ready when it happens. That's right. That's that. I'm. I'm not much of a making waves. I just kind of let whatever flow happens. You know, it's like okay, that's how it worked today. <laughs> yeah. I'm not much of a pedaling against the tide. You know, it's just it's it takes too much effort and it's exhausting. So. <laughs> Too much use of that emotion and energy, right? Yes. yes yeah. It's easier. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, is there anything else you would like to share? Um, well, I, let's see. I'm often, you know, people know me as a yoga instructor, but that's such a small part of what I consider my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, um, and I always think it's kind of interesting, you know, that, you know, they want you to teach more classes and you should have a night class. And I'm like, no, that's not what I want to do, you know, I'm, and I've, I've figured out the boundaries, you know, by this time in your life, if you haven't figured out your boundaries and you're letting people guide you where they want you to be, then, you know, shame on you, I guess, because I, you know, I, I enjoy yoga. It's good for me as well as, you know, I feel the community that the classes brought. And, but I guess my real passion is um, gardening and the community garden. <laughs> nice. Yeah. How much time do you spend up in the garden? Oh, um, well, it, it depends. Some, uh, in the winter i spend a lot more time up there because it's cooler i'm not i'm a fair weather gardener or cool weather gardener when it's summer and it's warm i simply water and pick <laughs> but in the winter i i actually you know take on projects and clean out plots and give you know plots away and you know kind of i spend more time with the garden in the fall in the winter in this early spring than I do this time of year. I simply water. Nice. And pick. Well, <laughs> yeah. I some of the leaves on my walnut tree and my cherry tree are yellow. Oh. It's the sign that fall is coming. That's right. Yes. And it seems early this year, but how can you tell with this crazy weather? <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we, we're really, we are blessed with, or blissed with this ideal climate that we have. But it just seems like uh, it. we better get rain is all I got to say. <laughs> yes, yes. We'll be praying and hoping for rain. That's right. We'll be doing rain dances. Yes. So. Cool. But yes, that's... Um, I, I started the garden to uh, anchor that land as public land and to create a bigger park and, you know, open space is a healing space for any community. And we really need to expand 
uh, outdoor spaces for people. Yes. Because it, it too uh, relates to wellness, you know, the whole nature bathing <laughs> and how, you know, science is proving now that being out in nature with no city sounds and sounds of man and machinery, how it can lower your blood pressure and relax the body so that it once again, it, a relaxed body is in a state of healing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I want to thank you for your time. I really appreciate. I know when I when you first when I first invited you to do the interview, you said yes, but then I think um, we both needed to like get to the part where we felt we could come together and actually do this. And I'm really happy that we did. And I think it's going to be helpful for many people to have a little deeper understanding of yoga and what it is and how it can um provide a healing space for for a person so yes i'm so grateful i'm i'm so i'm thankful that you invited me i'm uh it's way out of my comfort zone but here i am it's good to practice being in that space yes yes thank you <laughs> thank you i'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off and then we'll close Stop recording.